Surely Pfizer haven't been paying grassroots activist groups to advocate for a product that they don't even believe in. That can't be true, can it? <laughs> Hello there, you 6.4 million Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage towards truth and freedom. Within you, there is a deep, deep radiance. Allow the effulgence to grow. Allow it to move forward. Allow the Empyrean within to shine without. The great forces must coalesce now. This is the march. This is the time. Remember your connection to the soil. Remember our connection to one another. Confront the systems of evil that are abound and all around. Turn on that notification bell right now we make this content every single day we don't want you to miss a thing a bit like that Aerosmith song don't want to miss a thing you don't want to you got to stay awake like Steve Tyler baby I had a fantastic conversation with the incomparable Lee Fang thanks you very much I call him because this guy is absolutely gorgeous let me know in the comments if like many of our viewers over on Rumble you find him easy on the eye proper eye candy Lee Fang let's not objectify Lee Fang let's listen to Lee Fang as he explains to us that Pfizer were investing in active groups, in particular in Chicago, where there was some hesitancy among, uh, let's say, African-American community members, and they paid community activist groups to endorse the vaccine. Astonishing story. You're going to love it. It's not going to surprise you, particularly when you look at Pfizer's record profits in a year when they said themselves, through their CEO, Albert Baller, it would be inhumane to profit from the pandemic. And yet they profited from the pandemic, so that makes them, oh, you can work that stuff out for yourself. Watch this conversation with Lee Fang. You are going to love it. Stay to the end. Let me know in the comments, did I miss anything? We want to start with the exclusive story. As I understand it, Pfizer are attempting to sort of set up grassroots organisations that are lobbying for COVID vaccine mandates. I'm sure I'm mangling that somewhat, but it sounds like Pfizer are spending money to create apparently authentic voices advocating for vaccine mandates. Is that what's happening, Lee Fang? Well, look, um, this story basically takes a look in 2021 when in the United States we had multifaceted mandates, you know, mandates enacted by, I live in California and San Francisco, there were very restrictive uh, mandates here, but, you know, across the country, uh, including the Biden administration uh, in September of 2021, uh, enacted a, a very kind of strong mandate with no exemption for prior immunity, for, you know, kind of natural immunity, or prior infection, natural immunity. And, you know, Pfizer was not playing a kind of visible role here. They didn't comment on any of the articles. They, didn't, they weren't really talking to the press. You saw um, consumer groups, civil rights groups, patient groups, doctor groups, um, you know, public health organizations all saying, you know, these mandates are necessary. Um, even though there wasn't a lot of scientific evidence to, to support the basis that, you know, we needed these mandates that, you know, they, they were sold to us with uh, the claim that they would stop transmission of the virus you had this coalition of community groups saying we need the mandate. Well, I'm taking a look at new disclosures that show that many of those organizations, these third party organizations with a lot more credibility than a pharmaceutical company with a lot of money to, to gain, um, were taking funds from Pfizer while lobbying for these controversial policies. Uh, so, you know, I list them out. Um, I talk to a lot of experts. Um, it's a story I just published right before uh, coming on to your show on my Substack. We're very excited to receive this uh, exclusivity from you, Lee. Can we have a look at this? some of the Pfizer lobbying stats? So we'll just talk you through this, Lee. It's stuff that you'll obviously know. Can you pull out for me? Um, Pfizer CEO Albert Baller is the treasurer of the pharmaceutical lobbying group, Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America. Pharma spent a total of $140 million over that, in fact, on lobbying between 2019 and 2022. As well as the pharmaceutical industry being the largest single advertiser on mainstream media, 75% of all their ad revenue comes from the pharmaceutical industry, Lee. So we're talking about an almost immersive omnipotence. They've got power in every direction, as well as it appears as a result of your um, exclusive there to be investing in apparently organic and authentic voices that, that are, you know, pro mandate or pro. Uh, vaccination. Do, what uh, chance do we have of real democracy? What chance do we have of legitimate open conversations when an organisation can exert that much power over that m m uh, much of the machinery of the state, whether it's media or government itself? Well, look, you know, the figures you just cited were the ones that have to be disclosed. You know, that's when they hire, you know, a former member of Congress or a staffer to go and wine and dine, you know, a policymaker or regulator. They have to disclose most of that funding. Uh, that spending, but 
so much they don't have to disclose, how much they're spending on television, how much they're spending on TikTok ads, how much they're giving to these, these front groups or these doctors groups or these public health groups that kind of set the nature of the debate. They kind of appear in the news media, they create events, and they create a discourse that looks authentic, that looks organic, but it benefits the bottom line of their benefactors of companies like Pfizer. And you know the vaccine debate is, um, you know, I think it's fraught, it's interesting because this has shaped our lives in the last three years of the pandemic. Um, but it's, you know, it's also not that unique in the sense that every major pharmaceutical company in the United States uh, engages in these practices. They, they uh, pressure regulators, they um, spend so much money on direct to consumer advertising uh, and really, they kind of just dominate the entire public policy debate. So, you know, we can talk about a lot of other special interest groups, but pharma un is unique in, in just the raw amount of money they spend to control the entire public sector uh, on regulatory, on, on policy, on, on really everything in terms of, of, of how it affects uh, medicine and as, has, as its practice in the United States. Li Fang, what specific what specific groups did they fund, mate? Or do any of them stand out as um, it, does it seem particularly manipulative or deceptive? Or any of the groups that have like legitimacy or authenticity that that, that is surprising? Well, look, you know, let's just talk about a few of them. You know, in Chicago, there was a very kind of controversial vaccine mandate. There are also discussions about vaccine passports. Um, and, you know, a large percentage of the African-American, the black community in that city uh, was not vaccinated in 2021. And one of the oldest uh, African-American uh, civil rights groups, the Urban League, Chicago Urban League, went out into the media and, and, and was asked, you know, would this mandate hurt the African-American community? Would it, would it kind of push them out to the sidelines? And she was very clear in lobbying and pushing back against that, saying, no, it's the, the mandate's worth it. It's worth it for our community. She never mentioned that, you know, just prior to that interview, a few months prior to the interview, she received a $100,000 check from Pfizer, not mentioned during the interview, not mentioned on the Urban League's website. You know, it was, it's not disclosed until this morning, until right before uh, appearing on your show. Um, the, Amer the, the Consumers League of America, I mean, this is another consumer advocacy group that's kind of famous for standing up to corporate power, you know, founded over 100 years ago, fighting against monopolies. They're a group that kind of mysteriously endorsed uh, the mandates in 2021. Again, they received big money from Pfizer and even has a Pfizer uh, lobbyist on its board. You know, these are intricate relationships that aren't disclosed uh, to the people reading these press releases who are getting pressured by these groups. And it's affecting the entire debate. It's affecting how regulators see these issues. And it's also it affects how the public sees this. When they see these third party groups that um, have some credibility. You know, these are kind of famous organizations that are known for standing up for the public interest. When they're saying, hey, these mandates are a good idea for the American public, it seems genuine. They're just not disclosing the Pfizer money, which I think, you know, is a relevant factor here when you're talking about a policy that compels Americans to take this product. Yeah, I think that should be at the beginning of the endorsement. I've heard say, African-American people should take these vaccines. Also, earlier, a minute ago, actually, I just got $100,000 from Pfizer, who I, I think they do sell vaccines and they would potentially financially benefit. If, if it can't be explicit, you can't have democracy. I think what the danger we have now, Lee, is we've reached the point where there's such mass distrust in government, mass distrust and mistrust of media and there seems to be no attempt to rectify that through authenticity and morality and principled action, but through the increase of censorship, through the increase of control. Well, what a fantastic conversation that was. Now you know what all the fuss is about when it comes to Lee Fang, what a beauty he is, what fantastic journalistic work he's doing. One of the true journalists out there that we can rely on, that we can depend on to be our voice, that we can rely on to convey truths to us, we the people. Uh, uh, let me know if you enjoyed that video. If you did have a look at either of these, turn on the notification bell, subscribe right now. But more important than any of that is that you please stay free.